Hey guys, Banish Designs here with my first tutorial on this new channel. I hope you guys enjoy it. I use this type of technique a lot in many of my videos, so I hope you guys will like this. So first, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a realistic material. I'm going to give two examples, one with a wooden one and one with a metal texture. So first thing you want to do is double click on the materials to make a material, then double click on the material. Go to color and go to texture and load image. The first one I'm going to show you is a metal texture. So this one, go to your folder where you have your textures and go, and I have one called scratch metal. So I'm going to use that. Press no on this. You can have specular or no specular if you want. I'll just take it off just for, for the material. So first thing you want to do is go to filter. What this does, it opens up a whole nother area for the material where you can change the saturation and all the and the brightness of it and everything. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. Just you guys can mess around with it later if you want. So after that, go back to your color and go to copy channel, then go to bump and click it. Press paste channel and then right here where it says strength, turn that up to 50 or 60. The higher you go, the better the material looks. And by that, I mean wherever, as for the example for this, there's a bunch of scratches, it'll indent it to make it look more realistic. The higher you go, the more realistic it looks and the longer it takes to render. So now click on the material where it says texture and then go to contrast and turn it up to 20 or 30. That usually looks the best. So, cause if you look, it gets a little too dark when you get higher. So just put that at 25 and get a reflection cause it's metal. Make sure you put on Fresnel. This is the most realistic looking reflection and it looks really good. So I'm putting mine at 10 and 20. Usually what I do with reflections is I'll put it at a 10 difference. The brightness is always 10 lower than the mixed strength. So once you've done that, just grab a sphere or something. This is just as, as an example so you guys can see what it looks like. So put that on. What I do is I t I'm going to take a light and I'm going to move it forward. And then I'm going to drag it straight up. Then just go shadow map soft and put it at 80. This gives it a nice little shadow around the sphere. So let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty ugly, I have to admit. So what else you can do to get make it look a little better is take a plane and then make a new material and put it on. And then once you do it, put it on luminance and turn it up to like 200. All right, so now that I got my plane up, let's just see what it looks like. Sometimes metal textures don't look as good, but here now it's a little better. You can see this. So as you can see there, this little bumps here that give it a nice look and feel, but the bottom kind of looks bad. So what I can do is I can just make another one and put this down here, see what that looks like. Sometimes it there you go. Now you can see that it looks really good. It all you can see all the indents and it gives it a nice realistic look. So this is this is getting a little long, so I'm just gonna do this quickly. So I'm just gonna show you what the wooden texture looks like. It looks really good. A good example of it is on my welcome picture. Um, you can see that the wooden picture look like the wooden text looks really nice. So Go back to load image and the one I'm using is grungy lines. You can probably just go look that up on Google or something. Take off specular here and just do, repeat the same thing that I did before. Go to filter, then go to copy channel, go to bump, paste channel, turn this up to 60. Then click on the material, go to contrast and put it at 20 or 30. I'm going to put it at 25 just so it's in the middle so that it just darkens it a bit. As you can see, it's a pretty big difference. You guys can tell what it's doing, right? So then go to reflection, go to Fresnel. And as you know, wood doesn't have as high as a reflection. So I'm going to put it at 10 and 15. 
that looks pretty good in my opinion. So let's take a look at what, what it looks like here. So as you can see, it's got a really big contrast here. So what you want, you can do for some materials, sometimes it doesn't work. You can go to basic, you go to tag where it says UVW mapping, change it to spherical and then seamless. At some text textures it doesn't work just because of the color color difference so you can just rotate it right here looks good let's render that out and see what it looks like now as you can see right here this is very realistic you got it indented in all the creases inside the the material the reflections coming off very nicely you can turn this up or down to give it a higher reflection or a lower depending on what you want it to look like so this is kind of wrapping up right now i hope this tutorial helped you out a lot i use this technique on a lot of my textures and it actually gives it a really good look and can help you with uh 3d compositing our real images which will be a new tutorial for another day so thank you guys for watching if this tutorial helped you guys out please like the video and comment because i really want to hear some feedback for what what I did good or bad on this tutorial and also what you guys would like to see next. Thank you guys. Have a great day everyone.